So let's summarize what we've learned today. So the first thing that we learned is that the postulates of special relativity imply that the speed c is actually a speed limit of the relative speed between any two inertial observers. Second, we learned a procedure to synchronize clocks using what is called uh, light beam synchronization. This is a procedure that's guaranteed to work which is consistent with the postulates of special relativity. If you had some other procedure which could synchronize clocks, then that would also give you the same results as that of light beam synchronization. But this is the one that we can be sure of is consistent with the principles of special relativity. Okay, and third, we saw that the relativity of simultaneity implies relativity of lengths and time intervals. And these three things, the relativity of simultaneity, the relativity of lengths, and the relativity of time intervals, are something that you do not expect at all from the point of view of Galilean relativity. It is only something that comes up from special relativity. And therefore, all of this is flowing from the postulate which differs from the principle of Galilean relativity. That is the postulate that the speed of light is constant for all inertial observers. Every single inertial observer will measure the same speed of light in their own reference frame. All right. So along the way, we defined a few terms uh, such as observer, uh, frame of reference, and we also defined a space-time event. And finally, using the postulates of special relativity, we formally derived the dictionary of special relativity. So we are now able to translate observations as seen by one observer into the language or the, the coordinates as described by a second observer. In the next class, we will see how all these intuitive ideas that we've developed about the relativity of length, of time intervals, and of simultaneity follow from the exact dictionary that we have derived for the special relativity transformations.